Mm. As a self-employed designer and creator, I do a lot of different projects. As most of you know, I'm currently building a record embossing lathe in this red suitcase. If you haven't seen the other episodes yet or want to know more, check out the link here. Today we are going to look at the machine that I built a few years ago and that the Leipzig artist Marianne Nagel uses in her workshop. This simple machine can draw sound waves on paper. In this video I will show you how this machine works and which components it is made from. If you like my content you can support me via Paypal me. Before I became involved with mechanical sound recording, I worked as a craftsman in church organ building. You know, the big instruments in churches. I therefore have some knowledge of physical or mechanical sound generation. Nevertheless, I have always found it fascinating that sound waves actually become visible as waves in mechanical recording media, like in vinyl records. Let us make a small dive into sound generating. When you strike a string of a string instrument, it oscillates in a scene wave form. The tone of the plain string instrument is relatively low complexity sound, which then also appears like a scene wave when we look at the sound in the recording program. Songs or voice appear in a much more complex waveform, like this for example. These waves are mechanically captured in grooves in a recording medium such as a phonograph record. When we look at the first phonographs and gramophones, we notice that they have a horn for sound reproduction. A needle moves along the grooves and transmits the sound waves to a sound box, which is directed to the listener by a sound horn. The sound box or reproducer is a membrane that is oscillated by the stylus that drives along the grooves of the record. The vibrations are carried through the medium of air from the sound box to the listener. We then perceive these waves as sounds. I wanted to put this phenomenon into a machine that makes the movement of sound waves and the dynamic energy of sound visible. But of course I wasn't the first one to try something like that. As early as 1857, Eduard Leon Scott de Martinville experimented with the first devices for writing the oscillation of sound waves and thus making them visible. Interesting side note, in 2008, the first recorded sounds were made audible by the guys from firstsounds.org using an elaborated process. You can find a large part of their research and sound files on the website. I can highly recommend you to have a look at the material, especially if you want to go into more details. In 2017, they have published a flexi-disc with seven phone autograms from Scott and Martinville, Thomas Edison or even Emil Berliner, you know, the inventor of the phonograph record. All the tracks are originally only visual recordings of sound that were converted into an audible format. Anyway, let's get back to my machine. I built this machine in 2018 and gave it the name Der Tonschreiber, what is German for the sound writer or the sound recorder. My actual intention was to design a musical object that could be used as an educational tool for workshops. Inspired by the sound writing machines of the 19th century, I constructed the simple machine. So now let us take a look at the components of the machine. The base is a wooden frame to which all parts are connected. A ramp sits on the frame, which presses the paper at a slight angle against the tip of the clamped pen. Neither too much nor too little pressure must be applied, which is why the angle of the ramp can be set in height using an adjusting wheel. A box in which the loudspeaker is installed hangs above the ramp. Two U-shaped steel tubes hold this box in position. At the front of the speaker is the mechanism that transfers the movement of the speaker to the clamp that holds the pen. As the speaker retains part of its membrane and therefore produces audible sound, I covered this area with a sound absorber. This reduces some of the noise that the user would otherwise be exposed to. For the audio input, I have installed a microphone at the user's head height or you can connect any other audio source via a cable such as a laptop, handheld recorders and so on. And these are basically all the components of the sound rider.
Some years ago I gave many workshops with my DIY record lathe and later also started using my sound writer for educational purpose. For example here, at the Floating University in Berlin. The group of people I gave the workshop to didn't just use the machine to make sound visible, they started to use the ductus of the pen movement to draw small portraits by talking to the person they were portraying. For the past few years this machine has been in Marianne's studio and served as a creative tool for much of her artistic work. It is interesting that Marianne has her own way of operating the machine. She hardly ever uses the ramp nor the cover of the sound absorber. Since I had designed the pen adapter for these old Muji 0.38mm gel pen refill tubes, which are no longer on the market, Marianne started to refill the ink herself or carved the refill shafts of other pens thinner. So they can fit in the adapter I designed some years ago. If you want to know more about the artistic work of Marianne Nagel, check out her webpage. I will put it in the liner notes of this video. During the filming I noticed that the machine is quite worn out and will soon be due for a service. The bearings are worn out and during the writing process it's just extremely loud. But Mariana is still working with it so maybe it's just fine. And hey maybe it's time to rework the principle of the machine and build it into a small red box. <laughs> However first of all the record lathe has to be finished. So, see you in the next episode where I will be sharing more process of the recording and buffing lace.